if you look at photos of kids having tantrums, they all have the same poses and body language. It's like fists clenched or feet kicking. It's like these are the feelings that need to be processed and they're happening physically. I hear a lot of parents say, use your words, use your words when their child is having a meltdown. But if you don't have the tools to even identify your feelings, you can't use your words yet. So there's a step of guidance between that direction and the actual meltdown that kids need to learn how to, to go inside and kind of locate where they're feeling upset and what made them feel upset. And then they can articulate what's going on and, and try to reach out to the people around them. And sometimes it takes a few minutes alone. So bad day is about a little boy. You are, you're just dropped in the middle of his meltdown and he finds some refuge inside of a paper bag, which he draws a big frowny face on. And he goes inside his paper bag and we go in there with him. And it's dark and it's quiet. And he thinks about his day and all the terrible things that have happened. And he figures out how to piece himself out and realizes that he's actually very strong and resilient and can come back to this place any time to reground. I really see this kind of learning, self-awareness and the study of emotional intelligence at this young of an age as an initiation and a kind of rite of passage that we don't otherwise have in our culture, which starts to tell kids that you are responsible for your feelings. We're raising much stronger citizens and people by addressing tough topics and helping kids learn how to manage their feelings.